Hello my friends, I welcome you for this tutorial of Python Basics. My name is Luvinga Hudson from Uganda and my email is there. Feel free to contact me, feel free to ask any question where you need more explanation. We are going to look at the basics in Python programming and we are going to look at the general introduction. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at several concepts in Python and generally the basics. I expect that every person has been reading something and now I'm just going to be throwing more light on several concepts in Python. Now, this Python programming, just like any other programming language, has a person who created it. So Python is a popular programming language that was created by this gentleman by the names of Guido Van Rossum. Guido Van Rossum, this is the spelling, Guido Van Rossum. So Guido Van Rossum is the one who released Python programming in 1991. Now Python can be used for a number of uh, things. Python can be applied in web development on the server side. It's used for software development. It can be applied in mathematics, in system scripting, in AI or artificial intelligence, in data science, and many our things almost Python can be applied in everything where programming is applied. Now, let's get started. We are going to start to install Python. First of all, before you install, you have to check uh, if Python is installed in your machine. So we can use the command line. You press the command button plus R to bring this command line, uh, the run interface, then type cmd and hit the enter or click the OK button. So you will be brought with this interface. So to check if Python is stored in your machine, just type this command python space dash dash then the word version and hit enter. So you are saying that when I press enter, I'm seeing Python 3.9.4. So that means this is my Python version that I'm running. So my Python is already installed. If Python is not found, you can go to this website and download it. So it is www.python dot org you can visit that website and download your copy of python and install it normally and after installing that means you've now installed the python interpreter and this interpreter will come with uh, an idle integrated learning and development environment we are going to talk about it uh, now as you know python is an interpreted Python is interpreted programming language. What does this mean? It means that as a developer of Python, you have to write your Python files, and these Python files end with .py or .py. That's their file extensions. So when you write such files in any text editor, like Notepad++, like Notepad, or whichever text editor you feel like using. When you write these files, you have to put those files into the Python interpreter to be executed. So when you install Python, we are installing the Python interpreter. Now, let's see how we can run Python in the command line. As we've said, we are going to first write the Python code using any code editor. Now, um, 
I like using Notepad++, so let me look for my Notepad++. Notepad, here it is. I can write in any editor. So from here, I can create a Python file. Okay. For example, if I click on File, New, I can change the language under P, I choose Python. Then I type any program file, any, f any program in Python. Okay. Let me just type the, the program to print something on the screen. Let me uh, type print maybe Welcome to this class. Now, let me save this file on my desktop. I already have this folder called Python. So it's where I'm going to save. You see there are two files. Let me delete them. You can also create a folder anywhere. There is this folder called Python, so when I open it, that's my folder. There is nothing, so I'm going to put my file in that folder called Python. So when I go back to my Notepad++, let me save, I click on Save As. I can give it any name, like maybe Python 1. That's the name, and I go to Desktop, I put my folder on Desktop, it's called Python. Let me look for it. Okay, it's here. Then I save there. Python. Hey, I've saved it with as power as. Sorry. I have to save as. Not this. I like Python. Python file. Then I save. I call it Python 1. So I save. Now this is my program that I've written. So how do I run after saving my file? I have to open it in the command line. So you have to be knowing some basics of command line. I can go to desktop by uh, putting the command cd desktop. So you see that I have now switched to desktop. Now on desktop I want to enter a folder called Python, the one that I created on desktop. So I type cd python. So I think now that I'm in that folder called python, now to run any file or to execute any file using command line in, and it's a, a python file, you begin with the command python. So I type that command python followed by the space, then I type the file name. So I code my file python1. Then I put the file extension. We said all oh, Python files are stored in .py file extensions. I put .py. When I hit enter, you are seeing that I have run my program. Welcome to this class. So I'm successful. That's very simple. That's how we can run any file of Python using any uh, text editor. And then we run it. In the command line now again another person if you want for short programs you may choose not even to use the code editor and you can write your code in command line directly and then run it in the Python shell so to do that you can let's open the command prompt again remember we hit the command we use the Windows button press R and type CMD then you hit enter so we are here so to go to the Python shell we can use the command Python or simply pi so you can type Python or pi so when you type Python you are brought with the version of Python and now you see these three forward or the three 
angle closing angle brackets or what you call the greater than sign three of them that means you are now taken to the python shell now from there you can type any code just like we've done i can say print uh, then i say inside the quotes remember even single quotes can work i say python is an easy programming language language and i hit enter so you are seeing here that i've run python is an easy programming language so that's simply how you can run the python code through the python shell of the command line okay we can continue let's talk about idle 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 in python as i said this is what we are talking about idle now idle stands for integrated development and learning environment using this environment you can execute python statements in the same way you execute them in the python shell this doesn't require you to save a file with idle you create a file or a python script and save it before you run it and you can also press r the f5 to run it so after installing python as we already saw we can look for our python idle you are seeing it here that's our python idle or you can simply search and type idle so it will come then you click and run the program normally so i brought to this shell and here you can still type within this shell just like we did in the command line here you don't need to save any file so you can just say for example print uh, god is always good and then we hit the enter so you run god is always good that's what your program is displaying but another way is to always have your files saved so that you can edit them you can add on your program you can review and you can uh, distribute them when you are uh, you want to share them with another person so you have to create files now i can go to file then i click on new file so i can even first save my file save us i'm going to use the same uh, folder i created on desktop i call it python then i might i can call it any name I, i'm gonna use this file for all uh the examples that we are going to be looking at so i can call it practice practice i save so here i can still do the same thing print then i i write what i want to display when the going gets tough the tough get going so i can click on run then i i run i click on this run module i can simply press f5 so when i run it is telling me that you have to first save it to continue i just click on ok so this is how my file is executing when the going gets tough the tough girl going so i can close that and i remain with my program so here i can even add anything print our god is love i control s i do control s to save then f5 to run so you are seeing the when the going gets stuff the tough get going god is love so that's how you use a python script in python idle okay 
Now let's talk about Python syntax. Python syntax. This is what we mean, the Python syntax. Now, this word syntax in programming, this word syntax means the grammar, the arrangement, the, the sentence structure, the rules of the programming language. So Python uses what we call indention. So this is what we are looking at first, indention. Now indention is simply the space that you leave when you are typing. For example, let's look at this simple code. I'm going to delete this. I'm using the same file. I just control, I do control S to save, then I run. So I can write a program like, let me create this program. A is assigned a value of seven. This A is a variable and seven is the operand. The equal to sign is an assignment operator. So I'm assigning A a value of seven and this variable A is an integer. Then B, I assign it a value of eight. Then I create a condition using the if statements. If A, that is the equal to operator, is equal to B, in Python, we put that colon. We don't use the braces. Now here, when I press enter, when I'm in the idle, it does the indentation automatically. So I can just say print. Then I say R is equal to B. A is equal to B. I close. When I press enter, then I can say else, but this else are, is part of this if, so I don't need to indent it. Else, then I hit enter, I print our a is not equal to b. I close, sorry. This is what we call indentation. This space, what does this mean? This space is what we call indentation. And it shows that this print is part of this if block. Then this print is also part of this else block. So we use the indentation to create the block of codes. Codes that belong to the same block are indented in the same way. And this space within the same block must be similar. I can't put another print here. No. They have to be similar. Here. Print. Like that. So let me run this. First of all, I save then F5. So it is bringing an error. E O. Okay, while well, scanning the string, literal. Okay, the error is somewhere here. That's where you are seeing the red, but I think you've seen it. I didn't close these. Uh, I didn't end the correction marks. So I save again, and I run. So I'm seeing A is not equal to B because we are saying if a is equal to b and we are saying a is 7, b is 8, they are not equal. That's why we are getting this else part. And if we put a and b to be equal, if I put 7 here, I save and then I run, then I get this first statement that a is equal to b. But my focus is on indention. And notice the colon after each statement. After the if, I put a colon and after the else, there is also a colon. And I said that any number of spaces can be used as long as they are similar in the same block. So that is indentation. Still on the Python syntax, let's talk about variables. Variables. Let me delete this. Now, variables, as we know in any other programming language, when you talk about variables, we are talking about 
storage memory locations and these storage memory locations do change within the program execution now python variables are not declared they are not introduced to the interpreter we said python language is interpreted not compiled now you can create a variable when you assign a value to it in python for example you can say a then i assign a value 8.6 i have another variable c i assign it a value of 6 then i have another variable d i can make it to be a string and i assign it a value i have to persist then after that i can display the results print air print b then print c now notice that when i'm printing variables or i'm displaying the variables on the screen i don't put the quotation marks remember the variable is not the one that we are printing but we shall print its contents what the variable holds what it is storing is what will be displayed so for to display the contents of the variable on the screen we don't put the quotation marks but if you want to display the string if i do this this string a is the one that will be displayed but if i do this that means what a is storing is the one that shall be displayed on the screen so this is how we create variables of different data types and at the moment we create the variables we assign them a value and the variable will have that data type depending on the value that you've assigned to it for example this variable a will have a data type of float because we assigned it a float value 8.6 whereas variable c will have a data type of integer because we assigned it an integer value of 6 and on the other hand variable d will have uh, a data type of uh, string because we have stored or we have assigned it a string value so let's run i save okay what is the error they are saying name b is not defined true we have a c and d we don't have b so we have a c and d let's run again after saving so now this time we have 8.6 that's the first print statement then c stores 6 and d is storing i have to persist so that's how you simply create variables in python and how to assign values to them okay let's continue still on the python syntax let's look at comments how do you comment in python now in python we can comment on a single line or on a multi line for example if i want this to be a comment i can simply put the hash symbol so it becomes a comment if i want the whole of this to be a comment i can use the three quotation marks and where i want the comment to end i still put the three quotation marks so i end the comment so this is how we comment on a multi line and remember in programming the compiler or the interpreter doesn't execute the comments so if i say print c but c has not declared i can create another variable maybe e i assign it a value of 45 then i print the e let me remove this so that means i only print 45 on the screen these have been commented out so let's run i have to save first so you're seeing i'm seeing only 45 cause this statement cannot be run it's a comment the whole of these lines are comments 
So I only have this and I execute to display the contents of E, the 45, on the screen. Okay, so if I run again, I have 45. That's how we simply comment in Python. So I think that Python is an easy program language. Okay, let's talk about uh, Python variables in a bit uh, more detail. Okay, variables, as I said, can be created and assigned a value at the same time in Python without first having to declare them. Now, in variables, we have what we call casting. In casting, we can be specific and we give the data type of a variable. That's what we call casting. For example, I can say variable A, I assign it a string value of 8. Here, I'm specific that this a string, this 8 is a string. Remember, a string can be any character. Even numbers, even letters can be strings. So this 8 is not a variable neither. Is it uh, maybe a flow? Is, it's not an integer neither. It is uh, a float, but rather a string. So here, 8. Let me use a comment. Uh, we use the hash. I can say A will be 8. This is a string. Then let me create another variable B. I assign it an integer value. So I put int. This int is a specifier. What we are doing now is what we call casting. I'm using the same value 8. Now this time our A, no, this is now B. B will be 8. Now it's an integer, not a string. Then I create another variable C. I assign it the float value 8. I assign it a float value 8. Now this time C will be 8.0 because our, this is uh, a float value, so it has the small points, 8.0. Now, let me try to run and you see the differences. Let me print A. I display A on the screen. Print B and print C. I save. I run. So you're seeing this 8 is for A. And that 8 is a string. This 8 now is an integer and this is a float. So that's how we do casting in Python. We are going to also look at the type function in Python. Now the type function simply gets the data type of the variable and you, you it returns the data type of the variable. For example, I have variable x, I assign it a value of 4. I have another variable y, I assign it a value. This is a string value. Maybe I say Jesus. Then let me print. I want to return the data type. So I, as we, I've said, we use the type function. So that's the type function. And here I want to return the data type of X, the type, in other words, the type of data stored in X. Then I have print, still I can use the type function, and this time I'm on Y. Then I save and I run. When I save and run, I have this int and string. When you look at this, I have x is 4, that's an integer, and y is Jesus, that's uh, a string. So that's why here you are seeing 
the data type class is integer here the class is str meaning it is a string so that's how uh, we use the type function to return the data type of the variable and I saw, I told you already that for the string both single quotes and double quotes can work so another person may just do that you get the same results now the variable names are case sensitive you should note that this y is different from this capital y for example if i put y here i must get an error because this y is not known it's not shown anywhere this is a capital y yet we have small y here let's try to save and run and you, you witness it yourself so when we run i must get this error that then it's a name error name y is not defined so you have to be uh, very careful because python variables are case sensitive so that's what we mean by being case sensitive okay we can continue can continue let's talk about the data types again in a broader way now as the name indicates when you talk about data types the type of data that is stored in a variable it can be stored in a constant variables variables can store data of different types and different types can do different things so in python we have common built-in data types the string string we use str then we have the integer we use int we have the float so that is float then we have complex the one we use for complex numbers we have list we have tuple we have a uh, dictionary we use dict we also have set and we have bool which means boolean so these are the built-in data types in python and the data type is set when you assign a value to that variable as we said the value that you assign to a variable will dictate or will decide the data type of that variable okay let's have an example we have a variable name this variable name are let me use capital letter at first oh name we can assign any name like let me use single quotes python class so this is a string depending on the type of data or the value you've assigned to our variable we can just know that it's a string str then you have variable age we assign it a value of 20 by the mere fact that the value is 20 then age is an integer variable so the data type is integer then we have something like height of a person and we give the value one maybe 175 uh, in centimeters 175 maybe 0.8 so this is a float then we have variable number and we assign it a value if a value like 8j then that means number is uh, a complex variable the data type of this variable number is complex then we also have variable I can say list one and this is how we create a list in python we shall look at it in details we use the square brackets then we have values inside all the yeah we have pen comma then you have another one another value pencil comma then we can maybe say a marker so that is a list and that's how we create a list variable so the data type is list 
then we can create a tuple, maybe tuple one. And this is how we create a tuple. We use the uh, the braces or the round brackets. We have, I'm going to use the same values. So you can just copy this and I paste it here. So that is a tuple. Then I can create a dictionary, the dict variable. So dictionary, maybe one. OK, for a dictionary, we use these curry brackets. These ones, those are what we call the curry brackets. And for a dictionary, we have values in pairs. For example, I can say country, and my country is Uganda. Then I put a comma to separate the first pair from another pair. I can put as many pairs as I want, and maybe my district. Then I can say uh, Kampala. So that's a dictionary. Then still I can create a set variable. I can call it set1. And I assign it a value. For a set, we still use curry brackets. But now the values are not in pairs. They are as the same values, the way we put values for the list and the tuple. Then I can also create a Boolean variable, like I set an option and I assign it a value of false. So for Boolean, it's either true or false. I can say false or true. And you normally use capital F. True or false. So those are the different built in data types that we have in Python programming. And at least I've created for an example for each data type. OK. We can move on to numbers in Python. Numbers in Python. Now, we have three numeric types in Python. That is int, float, and complex. We have talked about these data types already. Int, float, and complex. And we can convert from one type of numeric to another with the int, float, and complex methods. So we said we have three numeric types, int, float, and complex. Now still we use the int function all the int method, the float method, and the complex method. If it's a method, all methods, all functions will always have those braces. So we use these three methods to do what we call type conversion. When you want to convert from one, uh, from one type to another, we call it type conversion. Let's have an example of a code. So I can create uh, a simple code like age. I give it a value of 20. Now this one, of course, as you know, is an integer. Then we have height. I assign it a value of uh, maybe 175.8. Uh, and as we know, this is a float variable. Then I can put any number. I assign it a value of 8j. And as we said, such a value is a complex. OK. Then I can now do what we call type conversion. I convert this variable a since a OK, I convert the variable age, and as I assign the result to variable A. So variable A is assigned the conversion, the type conversion of age. And we are converting age from int to float. So we use the float method. So I put my variable that I'm converting in brackets. Oh, that variable is now working as the argument 
for my method. So I have age. Then I create another variable b. I assign it the type conversion of the integer type conversion of variable height. Now height initially is a float. I want to convert it to be an integer. Then I have c, which is a complex. Uh, I have number, which is a complex. Let me first leave it in complex. You will notice why, why I'm leaving it in complex. You'll find out. OK, number. Then I can now print these new variables. Print A, print B, then I print C. OK. I can even print their variable type so that you get to know using the type uh, the type method or the type function that I talk about. I can say type A so that you get to know really that A has converted age. Then this is type B and I can also print the type of C, the data type. OK, I save and I run. OK, this is our result. We are seeing A. This is A 20.0. Initially, it's integer. But now, uh, it's integer. OK. Let me run it again. It's integer, but here it is a float because we changed it to float. Here A, B is in integer, no, height is float, but we've converted it to integer. So the one which was 175.8 is just simply 1.75. We've left complex as it is, so that's why 8J remains 8J. And even the data types are shown here, float, the second one is integer, the third one is complex. So that's how we do the type conversion. Now you have to note that you can convert from integer to float and vice versa, but not complex. You can't convert from complex to integer or from integer to complex or from complex to float or from float to complex. It's impossible. Maybe we can try it and see if what I'm saying is okay. Let me convert this edge to complex. I save and I run. Okay. Let me first close this. I save and I run. Okay, yeah. In fact, I can convert from integer of from float to complex. It is okay. You see 20 to float, it comes 20 plus 0. This is now complex. But not vice versa. I cannot convert from complex back to integer. For example, if I convert, yeah. If I convert this, I cannot convert from float back, no, no, from complex, yeah, a number which is in complex to convert it back to integer or float. So which number is in complex here? It's the variable is number. So let me convert float to float, okay. Yeah, to float. The variable is number. You are seeing it. I want to convert this variable number to float. Let me save and I run. So you are saying an error. Can't convert complex to float, yet we can convert from float to complex. So that's how Python works. OK. Now, let's talk about a random number. Python has no random function, just like in some programming languages. Python doesn't use that random function. 
but to make a random number in Python, we have uh, an inbuilt module called random. And you have to first import this module called random, then you use that module followed by the uh, function called rand range and you give it parameters so that you can generate a random number in Python. So let's first import that module called random. We use the import keyword and we type the word random. So we can print and in the print function we, one of the parameters has to be the random random that is the module that you have imported dot then rand range so here we can put the range maybe from 1 to 20 so we have the range from 1 to 20 and then we run so when you run you have to first save of course so it prints any random number from 1 to 20 if I run again the number may change now it is 18 if I run again it is now 19 you are seeing it that is now 19 and if you run again it is 14 and so on so that's how we generate random numbers in Python okay let's continue let's talk about strings in python now in python you can assign a multi line string to a variable by using three quotes you can assign a multi line string multi line string we are not talking about comments but a multi-line string by using three quotes. You can use both double and single. Let me give you an example. Let me create a variable called my string and I assign it a multi-line string. So I can use the double quotes, sorry, three of them. So those are the double quotes. I can say my best uh, best movies are then I list the movies maybe Harry Potter Harry Potter then on a new line Avengers uh, you can also list your yours maybe uh, 24 hours then I can say and maybe Game of Thrones. Then I end still using the three double quotes. So this is a string on several lines, on multi lines, main lines. I can decide to print it and you see how it looks like. Print. Then I put the variable that I called my string. So I save and I run. So this is the result. My best movies, the, the way I've written it here is the same way I'm displaying it here. So that's how we assign a multi-line string to a variable in Python. Okay, still on strings, let's talk about strings and arrays. Now Python does not have a character data type. Car. In some languages, we have a data type called car for single characters. And normally, assign a value using. If I, it's a single character, we use that. I can say maybe uh, grade. I assign it a value of C. And this data type is car, which is character in full. But in Python, we don't have such a data type. We simply use the length. Uh, of the string and the length this time we use one and we use square brackets to access the elements of the string so we can create a, for example this code to get the character at position three I have a code I have a variable a 
I assign it a value of I said do not get tired do not get tired then I print if I want to display uh, the character at position the first character uh, the character at position 3 I simply use my variable a then the square brackets I talked about and I put the position 3 and if I run that's what I get n and if I scale even this I run again so I have n now this is how we read the first position of the character is always zero so this is zero for d then that o is one then space two and n is at position three so that's how we display a single character from a string using the position and using <coughs> the position of the character okay let's talk about looping through a string we can loop through the characters in a string with a for loop and we do this because strings are considered as arrays in python so since strings are arrays we can loop them we can loop through them using the for loop so let's create this simple program for x in now uh, we have this a uh, string called pumpkin for x in pumpkin don't forget the colon when you press enter the i the idle will indent for your automatically so then print x so it will loop through all the values and display them in the string so when we run so these are the values in uh, the elements or the characters in this string pumpkin so that's how we loop through it's very simple to loop through a string in python let's talk about the the length of a string or simply string length we use the len short for length the len function now let's have this simple program we have a variable a assigned this string i can say maybe hello my students then i print i display the length of this string length we normally say len a we put a in brackets so simply mean the length of a when we run we see 17 as the answer so we can even uh, uh, sorry we can count ourselves and see if you are correct but before we count note that for the length we begin counting from one not zero zero is for the position of a character in any array we begin at zero but for the length in a string we begin counting from one so this is one two three four five that space is six then seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and seventeen so that's the length of the string and space is also counted as a character okay students we are about to finish let's also talk about how we can check the string now to check a string we use the in keyword to check if a certain phrase or character is present in a string for example let's check if the word hope is present in the text that we are going to write let's create a variable called txt short for text and we assign it this string there is no better hope than that found in jesus there is no better hope than that found in jesus so i want to check if the word hope exists in this variable txt 
So that's what we do. Okay, let's save. When we run, the answer is true. So the word hope exists in this string. There is no better hope than that found in Jesus. What about this word? Ho, H-O-E. If we run, the answer is false. You are seeing that the answer is uh, false. Okay, let me first close this and I run again. The answer is false because that word ho is nowhere found in this string. So you can simply check using the in keyword. You can also use an if statement to check. Okay, let's create another uh, another text using the if. So we use the same variable. There is no better hope found. We use the same variable txt with the same string. Now we create an if statement. If this word hope or the string hope exists in the variable text, that's what this statement means, then we print something that we want, something like, uh, sorry, we have to use these kind of brackets, the braces. We can say, yes, uh, this word hope is present. So when we run, that's the answer. Hope is present. But if the word hope, we have no alternative. So we get nothing because we don't have the S part. OK. And you can even check if not. For example, let's this time use another simple program. You can use the if not to check. We can create a text. And we say, we assign it a string, Saturn is the father of liars. Then I say print if the word killer, if not, is present in our variable txt. Now this killer is not in in our variable. So what is the answer? True. Yeah, it's true that the word killer is not in our variable txt, which txt holds this string. Saturn is the father of liars. You can even use the if not, the not, using the if. I can say if this word killer not are uh, not in my variable txt then i can print uh, i can print and say yes uh, this word killer is not uh, may be present okay is not present I save and I run so yes killer is not present because it's not present so you can check using the in using the note not in and so on as simple as that now let's talk about slicing strings Slicing strings. Now to slice strings, you specify the start index and the end index. And you separate the two by a colon. And then you are able to return a part of the string. Let's understand that by using an example. We have this variable A. We've assigned it uh, this variable, my load, uh, this string, my load is able so my load is able and let me display 
the characters in variable A, but from position 3 to position 9. Remember, for positions, we begin counting from 0. Okay. So here, what I'm doing, I'm getting the characters from position 3 to 9, and this 9 is not included. That means it stops at 8. So I expect to get from position 3, this is 1, uh, this is 0, 1, 2, 3. So I get from O, that is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But 9 is exclusive, it's not included. So S, from O to I, S is not expected to appear. Okay, I save. So I have... L. Okay, from 3, when I come from 0, I start from L. And I, up to I, as I said, S is not part of it. So this 9 is excluded, it stops at 8. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3. So the one at 3 is L. That's where I start from. So that's how we get, how we slice a string. Note that the first character has index 0. Now, we can also slice from the start. To slice from the start, you leave out the start index. The range will start at the first character. So if you leave out the first index, 3, that means I am slicing 2 from the start to position 9. And this 9 is not included, so you start from M up to I. So when we run we have from M up to I. Good. Then we can slice to end. We can begin from maybe position 3. To slice to the end, you start, you specify the start position and leave out the end. So it will begin from position 3. This M is 0. Y is 1. This is 2. L is 3. So we shall begin from L up to the end. Okay. When we run, we have from L up to the end. Good. Then we can also have what we call negative indexing. Negative indexing. Now with negative indexing, we use negative indexes to start the slice from the end to uh, negative indexes to start the slice from the end of the string. So let's uh, use, let me do control Z. I want to use the same, uh, the same code. We have from negative 10, from negative 10 up to negative 2. Now with negative indexing, in this example, we are going to understand it. We are getting characters from R. This is R, negative 10 r in this word load that is position negative 10 we start counting from the when we are counting for the positive we begin from the left but for negative we begin from the right going to the left and when you are counting from the negative we don't begin at zero because zero is not negative though it's not positive but when accounting for positive we begin from zero so when counting from negative Begin from negative 1. So this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, and R is negative 10. So from R up to negative 2, so this is negative 1, negative 2. But negative 2, in the word able, that negative 2 is not included, meaning that L won't be included. Okay. So we run, that's why you have R, negative 10, up to B, which is negative 1, L, negative 2 is not included. Now, in fact, B is negative 3, and the L of the negative 2 is not included. So that's what we mean by negative indexing. Okay, let's rush. Let's talk about modifying strings. We can modify strings using the upper 
and the lower methods we can change from upper to lower or from lower to upper case as we want using those two methods let's have this example okay let me bring back that my load is able let me print a and i change it to upper then i also do the same print of a and I change it to lower, lower case. Okay. Good. So when I save and I run, you see it that this is to upper, this is to lower. As simple as that. Now we can also use the strip, the strip method to remove any white space from the beginning or the end. The white space is space before and or after the actual text. For example, if I put white space here and I put another white space here, that space before or after the actual text is what we call the white space. I use the strip string, uh, the strip method to remove that white space. So that's what that method does strip a a dot strip okay so when i run i don't have any white space here and here that's what it does then we can also use the replace method to replace a string with another string let me remove this white space i can use a dot replace now what I replace is what I write first I'm replacing M I put a comma I replace it with maybe TH use capital T TH instead of my M will be replaced with TH so you have thy load is able your load thy thy load is able so you're seeing thy load here, thy load is able. So that's how we replace a string with another, with another string. Then we have the split, the split method. This method returns a list where the text between the specified separator becomes the list items. It splits the string into substrings if it finds instances of the separator. For example, I can say variable A has this the load I like it beginning with capital letters the load is my shepherd then I put a full stop I shall sorry I shall not want then I create another variable B and I say variable B is assigned variable A dot the split. So I split A using what I'm, uh, the separator is what I put here. So the separator is the, uh, the full stop. I want to separate this from this using the separator, the full stop. Then I print now the result of B. So when I save and I run, I have this. We said uh, it returns in form of a list. So you're seeing these square brackets. That's a list. And where the separator is the one, the text that you specify becomes the separator, the character that you specify. So you're seeing the first one, list, the first substring, the load is my shepherd. The second one, I shall not want. So that's how we split in uh, strings in Python. Now let's talk about string concatenation. Concatenate is joining or to combine or to merge strings together and we use the plus operator to do that. I have this variable a, I have the value the load is my shepherd. Then I have variable B assigned 
I shall not want. Let me put space here because I'm going to join. Then I have variable C is the concatenation of A and B. So that's how we concatenate. Then I print, I display the contents of variable C. So when I run, we are seeing the load is my shepherd. I shall not want. So that's how we join strings. Now let's talk about format. String formats. How do you format strings? We can we cannot combine strings and numbers like what we normally do are in other programming languages. For example, if you want to combine a string and numbers, it is very easy to think like this. Let me first give you this example. We have this program height. We assign it a value of 175, then another variable my text I assign it a value maybe my name is uh, Hudson and I am maybe now you want to concatenate you put the height which I put as 175 then you print my text now in this in python this is not allowed so you are seeing it brings an error can only concatenate str string not integer to string now if that's the case what do we do in python so instead of this we use the format that one the format method this method takes the past arguments all the form all formats them and places them in the string where the place holders are. Let's try to understand what this means. So let me just modify this. Height 175. My name is Hudson and I'm. So from there, where I want to put the height, I use the carry brackets to show the place of where height will go. So 175 meters. In fact, these are centimeters. Uh, so that is what we call a placeholder. So once maybe that meters high, this is what we call a place uh, holder. Placeholder. These carry brackets uh, do what we call the placeholders. Then print my text now we add this uh, the method dot format then we are formatting the height so these are the arguments I put the arguments that will go where the placeholders are so I have height then I close so when I run I have my name is Addison and I am 175 centimeters high so where the presses press holder was this time we have the uh, content of the variable height because we put height as the argument of the format method good let's talk about still under format strings we look at other options so okay Let's create a simple code. I'm modifying this. Okay, let me just create a new one. Edge 30. Uh, height uh, maybe 7.3 meters or maybe inches, whatever. Name maybe peer. Then my info. Uh, this variable I say my name is I put the placeholder comma I am how many years I put a placeholder years old I can put a full stop I say I have maybe I put a placeholder the feet high 
put a full stop. Then I say print uh, my info, say the dot, we put the format uh, method, and now we give it the arguments. We put the arguments in the order. The first one is we want to put a name. Then the second one, because of years, that's the age. And the third one is the height. Okay, so we run. So we are saying, my name is Pira, I'm five years old, I have 7.3 feet high. Good, as simple as that. You can also use index numbers to be sure that the arguments are placed in the correct placeholders using the same. Instead, I can put index here, maybe two. I put here, indexes begin from zero, and then one. So from here, age, my name is, the name has been given an index of two, so I can put the, the name here. Uh, in fact, this is one, this is the two, because it begin from zero. The name has been given an index of two, height, index of one and zero is for the edge then I run so it will come perfectly as before my name is Pira I'm five years old I have 7.3 feet high using indexes so if you interfere the indexes you also put zero maybe two uh, maybe one here and two here then they have also to change. So you're seeing now, my name is 30, I'm 7.3 years old, I have Peter feet high. So because of the indexes. So that's how we use the index numbers in formatting strings. Okay, let's also talk about escape characters. Now in Python, we use an escape character to insert characters that are illegal in a string. An escape character is a backslash followed by the character you want to insert. A backslash followed by the character you want to insert. For example, I can create this text txt uh, string variable. I say when Jesus was born, he was both a hundred percent good and a hundred percent human. Now, I have already used the quotation marks. I cannot use them. I want to put quotation marks on good and human. If I just do like this, I will have to get an error. No, I want to put it on human. I will have to get an error. So, invalid syntax. But now, if I want those quotation marks to appear, I use what we call the escape character. And we say the escape character is a backslash followed by the character you want to escape. So, I want to escape this. I put a backslash also. I want to escape that, I put a backslash, the same applies to this, and that. So this time when I save and I run, I can get uh, the result. Okay, I'm running but nothing displaying because I have no print statement shown. So I can say print, now my variable, txt, save, and I run. So when Jesus was born, he was both 100% God in quotes and human 100% in quotes. So that's how we use escape characters. There are very many other escape characters. You can look for them and try them out. Let's talk about Booleans as we want to wind up. When you compare two values, the expression is evaluated and Python returns a Boolean answer if you are comparing two. So the Boolean answer is either true or false. For example, you want to compare your printing is 50 uh, greater than 30. Of course, we know it's false. So expect a false there. Then we are saying 
is fifty are equal to that of course not so that's also if uh, in fact the first one is 250 is greater than that but this is a false 50 is only equal to 5 then we can say print we are comparing 50 and 30 using the less than is 50 less than 30 no so this is a false then print 50 comparing it to 30 but we are using the greater than all equal to yeah, if it's greater than or equal to so this is a true so when we run you see the first one 50 is greater than 30 no false 50 equal to 30 no 50 greater than 30 yes true 50 uh equal to 30 no false 50 less than 30 yes 50 less than 30 no that's a false and 50 greater or equal to 30 true that's why you are seeing true so that's how we use the booleans in python and lastly let's talk about uh, operators in a brief and you wind up now in python we have several types of operators but we are only going to look at these common ones the arithmetic operators we have the plus we have the minus we have the multiplication we have the division that one is division we have the modulus we have the exponentiation exponentiation and we have the flow division so we're going to look at examples of each and we call it a day okay let's create a simple program we have variable x assign it a variable five we have variable y we assign it a value of three let's print this is how we use the plus operator x plus y we expect to get what five then we can also say x minus y that's no x plus y that's eight five plus three eight x minus y five minus three we expect to get a two okay then we also have print x multiplication we use that star or the asterisk uh that is five times three we expect to get a 15 then you have print x five divided by three we expect to get a float value hey i'm saying x times three x times y sorry and x divide by y then we have our x modulus y modulus when you divide the two the remainder is the answer the remainder after division is the modulus then you have print x exponentiation y exponentiation is like power x power y that is 5 power 3 5 times 5 times 5 that's what we mean then we have print x flow division y flow division it rounds the result down to the nearest whole number so it will do the round off to the nearest whole number but it doesn't round off it doesn't add or subtract any value it just it's like truncating okay we save and run so this is the result let me first cross this to clear the screen and i run again okay plus eight minus you get it to multiplication 15 then division the remainder yeah division is 1.0 it because it is a float x and y are floats it will return a float it won't put the other the small point then the modulus x modulus y that's x divided by 5 divided by 3 oh. remainder is 2 is the answer that is 5 times 5 times 5 that is 5 power 3 you get 125 and this rounds to the nearest whole number the flow division so that's the result now python assignment operators we have been using them 
assign to assign values we have the equal to uh, we have the equal to we have the the other arithmetic operators plus the equal to also plus or equal to minus or equal to the multiplication or equal to and so many others as you have seen these are used to assign to variables we also have what we call comparison operators the ones that we use to compare variables we have the equal to we have already used it the not equal to that's what we do the greater than the less than the greater than equal to then the less than equal to then you have logical operators these are used to combine our logical statements let's end with this code we have x assigned a value of 5 if we print and we compare x greater than 3 and that's a logical and x less than 10 what are we returning true or false first of all x is 5 is x greater than 3 is 5 greater than 3 true and x is less than 10 is 5 less than 10 true so this is a true and a true true and a true will give a true so the answer will be true because both sides are correct both conditions are fulfilled when we are using the and then the result is true let's run so i think that here the result is a true okay when we are using the all as long as one of the conditions is true the answer will be true as long as one so we expect it to because both of them are true now even if we say x greater than one two we know that x is okay x greater than third five is not this side is wrong but this one is correct so the answer will be true because one of them is it true but if all of them are false if you say greater again x greater than 13 no x greater than 10 no if both conditions are false then we get the false but if both are true we get it true if one of them is true we get it true but for and if both conditions are false still we get a false for and and if one of the condition is true and we are using and because x is less than that still we get a false for and to return a true both conditions have to be true but for all to return a true one of the conditions has to be a true then we also have note when you say note we put it just there note just gives the reverse you first look at this we are using and one of the conditions x is less than 5 x is less than 30 true x greater than 10 no the answer here will be no all false but because we are using note it will reverse and we get a true so that's how note works my friends thank you for viewing this long tutorial I urge you to come back to my channel and watch other videos. Invite your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. God bless you. Have a nice day.